Father in heaven, we are grateful to be able to be here to sit under your word. We know that you have chosen the words that we are to hear this morning. And so, Father, as we have your word open to us, we pray that our hearts would be pliable and ready to hear, not only just ready to hear, but ready to take action on what we have heard. So, Lord, we pray as you'll take Dave's words that you've placed in his heart and in his mind. We pray that you have him to communicate that in a in a manner that we're going to be able to receive this word. So, Lord, take his his thought process. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we commit Dave into your care. We commit our ears into your care. Amen. Can you hear me? What? <laughs> Matt, you need to work on your hearing. Okay. Hey. Um, and deception. What? Uh, how many? Uh, I've noticed there's been more issues of deception and fake pictures, faith reports, and all kinds of things all over the media and throughout our lives. And with artificial intelligence, it's just increasing more. There's loads of things that are happening. We need to be aware. So we need to be able to see the deception. It started in the in the art uh, in the Garden of Eden when um, Eve was deceived by the by the serpent. This is nothing new. This has been going on in a while, and it's been going on at every level of society, in every in every part. You know from. Uh, but it's recently, I think it's really been accelerating more than any any time before that I have been around. And I've only been around a couple of years, but I have been around. And I, but it just seems like it's more evident today than I've ever seen it. Uh, and look at and it, uh, during the Olivet Discourse, Jesus said, when the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And they will lead many astray. So the first thing that Jesus mentions in, in his discourse is the issue of deception. And in verse 24, it goes, it's down. What? The down one? The down one. What are you talking about? Oh, does that help? <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, that, that is what I'm doing right now. Uh, okay, yeah. I guess I, I, I did include that in my notes. Okay. And uh, and so, and for and look at in verse twenty, um, uh, verse twenty four, twenty four. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Which means the elect have a choice because they have the word of God, and they can uh, recognize the deception when it occurs. And here is my subject sentence. This is a little bit BSF coming up. Uh, I think I didn't keep it down to 10 words, so I, I went over that. <laughs> Ahab, uh, look at this. Ahab and Jehoshaphat, notice that they were both deceived, believing in false prophets, attacked Ram of Gilead, where Ahab died. And... Um, and this one, we need to know God's word, and then you will be able to recognize false prophets and avoid deception. The first thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to read verses 1 through 4. This is in Second uh, 1 Kings chapter 22. 
And it says, now three years passed without war between Syria and Israel. Oh, by the way, the reason I mentioned this about deception is you're going to see how, how deception was very, very evident. This is back thousands of years ago. And, um, and if it was happening then, it's still happening today. And, uh, and so this was when, uh, when a false prophets deceived Ahab and Jehoshaphat. And I put a red flag, number one. One of the problems that we see in this passage, then it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went down to visit the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, do you know that Ramah Gilead is ours? But we hesitate to take it out of the hand of Syria. With, so he said to Jehoshaphat, will you go down with me to fight at Ramah Gilead? Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. What was Jehoshaphat thinking? And I read a little closer, and I looked in Chronicles, and in Chronicles 18, he had made a covenant of marriage with Je with Ahab. Now, Jehoshaphat and, and 2 Chronicles 18, 1 through 2. Now, Jehoshaphat had great riches and honor, and he made a marriage alliance with Ahab. After some years, he went down to Ahab in Samaria, and Ahab kill, uh, killed an abundance of sheep and oxen for him and for the people who were with him and introduced induced him to go up against Ramoth Gilead. And so you got to be careful about alliances. Uh, and when the alliance is who you trust to be with you in the hard times. Like uh, he was, in, he was trusting uh, Ahab to be there as an ally to back him up in the hard times. And I mentioned about uh, here of Solomon made many alliances. This I believe is one of the biggest causes of the divided kingdom and of the uh, of the decline of Israel, and they're even going into captivity was this issue that was started by Solomon. Solomon started making uh, alliances with the, with uh, in Egypt. It says in 1 Kings 3.1, Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. Now, and I put a note in this. I said, Solomon's many marriage alliances led to idolatry in the eventual destruction and division of Israel. And he, would make, he made alliances, and then he built altars for his wives to be able to worship on the different hills. So he planted the seeds of idolatry in Israel through his marriages, and it, it was much more than him just having a lot of wives. It's what those wives brought. And he got and to depend on other nations rather than depend on God. And so that's a very dangerous situation. When you talk about alliances, Isaiah, Isaiah 31 um, says, Ah, stubborn children, declares the Lord, who carry out a plan that is, but is, uh, but not mine, who make it an alliance, not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. And this happens all the time. It's one of the things you'll look as you read through the history of Israel. You'll see that they depended on alliances. For much in uh, to further security rather than trusting in God. And it's the same thing that happens to us. There's a couple passages also from Daniel in uh, Daniel 11 6. After some years, they make an alliance, and the daughter of the king of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain or the strength of her arm, and he and his arm shall not endure, but she shall give him. Uh, be given up to and, and her attendants 
who fathered her and who supported her in those times. And then verse 23, from the time that an alliance is made with him, he shall act deceitfully and he shall become small with a small with a small group of people. So you can see that alliances, we've got to be careful who we have an alliance with. And I I I just put this as one of my first truths. I put uh up and uh and hasty alliances lead to disaster. And, and so what we're going to do is if you make alliances with people or agreements or sign a, uh, or sign a contract or, or get married hastily without thinking about it or make any kind of covenant without taking, uh, taking the Lord into account, when you're trying to make decisions on your own without God's help, it leads to disaster. And, uh, and that's what happened to Israel, and that's what happens to anybody who does this. And the application one is, who are your allies? Who are the ones you, you trust in? Who do you trust in in times of difficulty? Um, who do you depend on in a crisis? And who do you ask for help of uh, with important matters? Yeah, that's one reason why we have elders. So we have people who've been through things and that we can help get help when we're confused or when we're going through difficulties. This can be at a national level, an international level, or it can be at a family level. It can be wisdom and just knowing how to handle your own situation. And so the, um, and then we can see how this was a disaster for uh, Solomon. And then Ahab was following in his steps. And now we're getting to verse 13. Okay, in chapter, uh, okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, Jehoshaphat uh, made, uh, requested, uh, okay, here we go. I'll go to five and six, okay. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, please inquire of the Lord for me today. Now look at that. He requested to inquire of a prophet. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, 400 men, and said to them, shall I go to Ramoth Gilead and fight, or shall I refrain? So they said to him, go up, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. Now, they he set up 400 prophets. If there's 400, then they must know the right, they must be right. Isn't that true? If there's a bunch of them, are they going to be right? I don't think so. Jehoshaphat saw this. And that makes it even harder when I get to a point later on. But Jehoshaphat saw and he recognized that these prophets were not valid prophets. They were false prophets. He noticed that. By the way, so did they have. And so in verse 7, uh, and uh, so they all said to go up. For the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. They were giving advice that the king wanted to hear. This is what he, he wanted to do. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there still not a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? Yeah, it's good to find one. Uh, but it's important to get a, a someone who wants to uh, say what is correct. And in verse 8, it says, So the king said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man, Micaiah the son of Imlah, 
by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. Oh, poor guy. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say such things. In other words, I don't like him because he doesn't say nice things about me. That's poor Ahab. Poor guy. Don't you feel sorry for him? I don't. Uh, okay. And uh, look at this. Um, Micaiah was called. Abraham hated him because he always. Okay. Uh, he always. He told the king the truth. And, and I've got this, uh, this quote from Constable. Someone has said that a man is not really known by his friends. Rather, he is known by his enemies. Every man ought to make sure he has the right enemy. <laughs> the best compliment that could be paid to Micaiah was for Ahab to say, I hate him. So, because Ahab was not necessarily the recommendation you want to have. <laughs> Uh, but it's interesting. Uh, and then what do the kings do? They sit on their thrones. Nice, nice, big, prideful man. Um, and so then the king of Israel called an officer, uh, uh, called an officer and, uh, and, and sent him to Micaiah. Let's see, here we go. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, so the I uh, sent to Jehoshaphat, there is still uh, one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, who by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say such things. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring Micaiah, the son of Imla, quickly. The king of Israel sent um, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, having put on their robes, sat each on his throne at the threshing floor of the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets, prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah, uh, the son of Janiah, made horns of iron for himself and he said this would have been really something interesting to watch um uh, and said thus says the lord with these you shall gore the Syrians until they are destroyed and all the prophets prophesied so saying go up to ramoth gilead and prosper for the lord will deliver it into the king's hand truth number two is false prophets will tell you what you want to hear. Now, uh, and and so uh, we know that from what, uh, if someone just tells you whatever you want to hear, they're probably trying to manipulate you or to sell you something. <laughs> and the application, how can only hearing what you want to hear be disastrous. Because if you're walking toward a cliff and they said, just keep walking, okay, go fall off. And then how can this and how can this be a sign of a false prophet? Just think about that. It it, it is a, if they're just telling you what you want to hear. If you're in a church and they're just telling you just what you want to hear and they're not doing anything to challenge you in your way of thinking then you're probably not getting much out of it. We need to have, have correction. We need to have people who are willing to say the hard things to us. You know, a way to avoid being falling under deception is to listen to the warnings of other people who follow, have followed the Lord. Listen to those who can give good counsel. Listen to the word of God. Um, have friends who are willing to speak to you if they see you stepping the wrong way and have the humility to listen to them. Now, Micaiah prophesies disaster for Abraham. 
in verse 13, he says, And the messenger who had gone to Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Now listen. Uh, uh, now listen. The words of the prophets with one accord encourage the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. In other words, you know, you've got to be politically corrupt. Um, if if they if the what was politically corrupt in this setting was to say, go up and fight because God's going to give them into your hand. That would have been politically corrupt. But it wasn't corrupt. And uh, and uh, he was leading him to disaster. Uh, he said, give a favorable advice. And uh, and that isn't uh, that isn't going to lead to uh, uh, good results. And so, but he, but I love what Micaiah says later. And Micaiah said, "As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak." And that reminded me of Matthew chapter ten, verses nineteen and twenty. He said, when they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are, are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. And he said, I'm only going to speak what God tells me to speak. And we know what God wants us to speak when we know his word, when we put it into practice in our own lives. That's what guides us. And then it's interesting, uh, uh, Mike. And uh, over here, Micaiah, uh, in verses 15 and 16, then he came to the king and said to the king, Micaiah, shall, go, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall we refrain? And he answered them, go and prosper for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. So the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you will tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? One thing it doesn't say in this passage, it doesn't say in his sarcastic voice that he was using to say that. I think he was speaking very sarcastically and he was you know, repeating the same things that had been said by the other prophets. And, uh, and uh, he was just giving it right back to him. And so, uh, and so now Ahab is uh, recognizing that this is not going to end well for him, probably. Uh, verse 17. I went the wrong way. Oh, no. Okay, now in verses 17 and 18, then I said, I saw all of Israel scattered on the mountains. And by the way, this is a key verse because you'll see it coming up at the end. Uh, this is a prophecy that he's given about what is going to happen to Israel. And it shows up at the end of the battle. I saw all Israel scattered on the mountain as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. Uh, and the king set of Israel said to uh, Jehoshaphat, "Did I not tell you he would prophes not prof uh, prophesy good concerning me, but evil? That could have something to do with the kind of lifestyle that Ahab li was living. <laughs> it just might. Okay, and uh, and so he prophesies defeat for Ahab and Israel. He does he he's prophesying disaster." And if you'll notice one thing about good prophets in the Old Testament, usually they're not affirming everything the people are doing. They're telling about what the, the judgment that is coming and warning the people so that they can avoid that judgment. And so when someone is just giving a lot of prophecies, you like at some churches, and I've even been around some people who said that they always give these prophecies and it's always something affirming, telling how good you are and how you're going to have success and how you're going to... But it, that doesn't match the kind of prophecies we see in the Bible. If they were truly prophesying about the Bible, uh, you know, it, let them use the Bible. Let them use the words from the Word of God. Let them uh, be speaking things that at least accord with the Word of God. 
as far as giving you good advice. And so, okay, now uh, we're going to read in verse uh, uh, the 19 through 23. And I wanted to give a little preface to this. This is a statement where a, uh, uh, God is a, 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 where Micaiah is giving a statement about a, a council that was going on in heaven, discussing him. Remember that Ahab has already heard what is going to happen on that hill. He's already heard the prophecy. He's already heard the false prophets. He knows they're false prophets. He already has been told that. He's already heard that. And so you read the passage from 19 through 23, and it goes like this. Then Micaiah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who will persuade Ahab to go up so that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner and another spoke in that manner. Then uh, then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said to him, in what way? He said, I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours and the Lord has declared disaster against you. All he's doing is confirming, telling the, uh, that these prophets are false prophets. Don't follow them. Don't let them be your guide. He's even telling him about uh, what, uh, how, about the, the, the manner of their deceit and things like that. It just is really clear that God is the one who is directing the whole passage, but he's given Ahab a way of escape. He could have listened at this point, but he wanted to follow those that tickled his ears, that were there, uh, you know, saying that uh, that he was the uh, he was the best, and he was going to. Uh, uh, get what he wants. And I, I mentioned about that he did not turn back from his plans after the dire warnings. But God is good, truthful, and holy. He even revealed this to uh, Ahab and to Jehoshaphat at this time. Jehoshaphat saw all these things. Ahab had given himself over to evil. And read in Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 24, what that means. He had given himself over to do evil. And uh, one way that God judges people is to give them up to their sinful desires. And that's really what he was doing to Ahab in this motion, the moment that led to his death. Okay, and now uh, there's a... Uh, and uh, over here, I just had some questions. Uh, does God have a heavenly council? It, the heavenly council is mentioned in Job with the temptation of Job. I don't have all the answers about what happens at these. It's sort of a, it's very mis mysterious. But, uh, and you read in Daniel 10, when the prince of the power of Persia was over, uh, the, and the, the angel came and spoke to Daniel, but there was some interaction between uh, Daniel, uh, between the prince of the power of Persia and Michael and uh, and Gabriel as they were speaking to uh, Daniel. And there was also, in Psalm 82, there's also a council that's mentioned. I don't understand all these, and I don't pretend to, but I just am saying that there this isn't the only place in the Bible that this is mentioned. And uh, what was the deceiving spirit? I think that it was, I think it just the flesh and lying. It, 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 look at how God deceived Eve in the, in the garden. How he deceived just by saying, 
you'll be like God. Or uh, and just I, I know God the Satan's techniques have really not changed over the years. They're the same. And uh and why do you think Ahab was so uh, susceptible to this deceiving spirit? I think it's because it's what he wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I mentioned Romans 1, 18 through 22. And I will, I can post these notes on, on uh, the WhatsApp so you have those available. Okay. And, uh, okay. Uh, and look, and here's the reasons I put up that why he did, uh, did it. He had already been warned about the impending defeat. He did not turn back from his plans after the dire warnings. God is true, good, truthful, and holy. Ahab had given himself to do evil. And one way that God judges people is to give them up to their sinful desires. And, uh, and then a false prophet struck him. This is the guy who had the horns. Those iron horns, that must have, been, that must have given him his credibility, I guess. <laughs> um, and so he said, how did the spirit leave me to go to you? Well, I don't think he was ever with you. Um, and but look at how Micaiah reacts to him. And Micaiah said, indeed, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber. You're going to run away like a little kid and run into an inner chamber to hide yourself. And uh, uh, so the king of Israel said, Micaiah, uh, take Micaiah and return to him, to Amnon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, thus says the king, put this fellow in prison and feed him on bread of affliction and water of affliction. But Micaiah said, if you ever return in peace, uh, until, until I come in peace. But Micaiah said, if you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, take heed, all you people. And look at this. He, he prophesied against his adversary, saying that he was going to be running for his life. Uh, then he said he was thrown into prison because he spoke the truth. He did not get sent to prison because he had done something wrong. He got sent to prison because he specifically spoke the truth. And uh, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteous sake, for righteousness' sake. Uh, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Here's truth number true. A true prophet hears the word and tells the truth. And so, prophecy. One way that prophecy has been today is just the foretelling of God's word. We're not getting new revelation, but when a when someone is speaking God's truth, God's word is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even into the division of joints and marrows and of the intents and heart of the heart. And so what happens is that God uses his word to give us conviction, to guide us through these things. And the only way we can avoid being deceived is through the is through the word of God, is through listening to how the Spirit guides us to understand the Word of God. And uh, and then and an application is how do you recognize a true prophet? And then we look at Deuteronomy chapter 13, 1 through 5. And this is, uh, I love the, now I'm starting to just love the book of Deuteronomy as I'm studying it. And it says, if there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer or a, of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder comes to pass, of which it, he spoke to you saying, let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us serve them. You notice if it, if it, contradicts the word of God, he's not a true prophet. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
and with all your soul. And you shall walk after him, after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. But that prophet who is a dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst. I think that that is... Uh, um that's a a good passage to uh to uh apply when we're hearing passages if they are saying something contradictory to the word of god regardless how good it sounds it's not the word of god okay now uh here uh, the, here we have the end of the story as we're starting verse 29. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramah Gilead. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you put on your robes. <laughs> so the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded, and I want to point out something right now. Jehoshaphat had heard all these prophecies. Jehoshaphat was the one who asked for a true prophet. Did Jehoshaphat follow what God wanted him to do? No. And so Jehoshaphat almost lost his life because he did not heed the word of the Lord. And uh, now the king of Syria had commanded the 32 captains of his chariot in verse 31. 32 captains of his chariot, saying, Fight with no one small or great, but only with the king of Israel. So it was when the captain of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat that they said, Surely this is the king of Israel. Therefore they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. It happened when the captains of the chariot saw that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. Now a certain man drew a, a bow at random. Really at random, God directed this. Uh, uh, and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. So he said to the driver's chariot, Turn around and take me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Syrians and died at evening. The blood ran out from the wound onto the floor of the chariot. Then, as the sun was going down, a shout went out through the army. Every man to his city, and every man to his own country. You notice that that was exactly what Micaiah had spoken in verse 17. And so the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried him in Samaria. Then someone washed the chariot at a, at a pool in Samaria, and the dogs licked up the blood while the harlots bathed according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did, the ivory house which he built and all the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Ahab rested with his fathers, then Ahaziah's son reigned in his place. And so and so here, uh, I got the, the notes here, and I'll post these for you. Uh, and these... God's judgment was accomplished by a, sword, uh, by a soldier shooting at random. And here it goes. Uh, I put here, my, Micaiah's prophecies were literally fulfilled. And Ahab's life and legacy were ended in shame as his blood was cleaned at a prostitute's pool and dogs licking up his blood. And so the end of this... How can bad advice leave you astray? And what is the danger of disregarding good counsel? Which is what Jehoshaphat did, and they have. But the one that gets me is Jehoshaphat, who asked for the counselor and then didn't pay attention to it. And 
Anyway, these two got mixed up. They should have been turned around the other way. Uh, but uh, it says, uh, believing false prophets while ignoring true prophets leads to disaster. And uh, here's just a few takeaways that I had. Um, the devil will attempt to deceive you. Seek the truth and believe the truth when you hear it. I was thinking about Jehoshaphat in a lot of these. Avoid alliances with the ungodly. Have humility to accept correction. Know the word of God to avoid being deceived. I should say um, being willing to listen to people who speak words of correction to you. Be willing to put the truth of God's word above ungodly alliances. Repent while there is still time. When God uh, saves you from a horrible situation, give him thanks. One man with the truth is stronger than many with lies. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking to us through this story about Ahab and Jehoshaphat and the mistakes that they made in this situation. Help us to learn to listen to you and ask your assistance and to get your help in each of our situations. Help us not to be deceived in this time of deception. Help us to follow you when everybody else is telling us what we want to hear. Help us to listen to good counsel. Lord, I pray that you would help us to walk with you when everyone else seems to be walking in the opposite direction. We just praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.